this looks kind of nice, right? Well, I want to help the community. I want to help you guys do better in Diamond. In a previous poll I did on my channel, out of the 178 of you that voted, and thank you, 51% of you guys ended up in Diamond. Whether that's a guy spent a lot of time in Platinum and hit Diamond late, or you guys just get stuck in Diamond for a long portion of the split. I want to give you guys the Meta Legends to run, counters to the Meta Legends, and the secret sauce, the best playstyle for gaining consistent RP in Season 11. Let me talk to you guys about how to get out of Diamond. Let's go. So let's begin talking about the Meta Legends. Who is being played right now in Diamond lobbies? Up until Diamond, you might have been getting away with just playing kind of whoever you want. Maybe you're just like really good at Apex and you just didn't really care. But once you're in Diamond, not playing Meta Legends can really hurt your team. There are many situations where a Legend's ability can be literally the difference between winning a game or losing or just staying alive in general. So with that being said, you know, the Meta Legends that I recommend to you are gonna be Valkyrie, Caustic, Gibraltar, Bloodhound, Wraith, and finally, Octane. The meta in Diamond Lobbies is just this handful of legends. There's not much room to be creative since the way World's Edge is constructed favors these handful of legends. Maybe you can throw in one or two others, but I want you guys to stick with this group that I just mentioned. This is who I recommend to you guys. And if you guys want a more in-depth breakdown of the team comps or individual legends and why I'm recommending them, check out my best legends for World's Edge ranked thumbnail right here, somewhere here, and drop a like and comment on that video, please. There is one legend I didn't mention, but he's been a developing trend as of lately. A knight in shining armor through the very stinky, stinky gas of caustic that is being run everywhere. And I want to show him and present him to you guys. We want a legend that counters this. Not really necessarily negates the caustic gas because no legend really does that, but someone that can annoy the caustics, that can waste their meds, make them reset their traps, just not be just focusing on being offensive, having to like reset their things and just be preoccupied. You want to annoy them. You want to frustrate the caustics. And who is that? It's Fuse. Yes. Fuse. Old Fusey that we had as probably the worst legend in the game a few seasons ago when he came out. Yes, Fuse is actually, I think, a little useful and it really comes down to his Knuckle Cluster. It's the worst nightmare for any Caustic team just sitting and hiding in buildings on World's Edge. You can very, very easily hit all three members of another team and farm Evo Shields for yourself and theirs and annoy them a lot, waste their meds, and that damage can really add up over time. And it can really help alleviate some of the issues of always being pressured and feeling like the caustic teams are just kind of on top of you. So I try him out. He's my sleeper meta pick for this current split on World's Edge because of the buildings and so many caustics. And the question I want to leave you guys for this video is what do you guys struggle with the most in Diamond? Let me know in the comments section. I will be replying. So where to land in Diamond Lobbies on World's Edge? There are a lot of places that are really good on World's Edge, but I personally have been landing religiously on Skyhook this split, especially if you guys have seen me in the live streams, you see I land there all the time, so go check out the live streams if you haven't. Uh, but the other places I really like on World's Edge are Overlook, Lava Fissure, Climatizer, and Thermal Station. The reason I personally land Skyhook is I don't mind if we're contested by multiple teams, the loot pool is really great there, and with all the buildings it's very easy to stay safe, and if the other teams forget that you're there, or they don't get a good count when they're dropping, it's a very easy third party, or isolated 3v3 if it's just one other team. And in Diamond Lobbies, especially the very slower lobbies that are very common, that early KP might be all that you get until the end game, because I do not recommend fighting in the mid game. But like I mentioned, a lot of other spots are really good, and in general, you need to just communicate with your team how many teams are dropping around you, stay close together. Dropping split up is the easiest way to just, you know, die very quickly, but World Edge has a lot of POI, so you should be fine landing at any of them, and especially if you like landing alone, you should be ready to go on World Edge. And while we're discussing where to land, let's discuss quickly the third party situation on World's Edge. You know, I need to mention third parties in Diamond Lobbies because they are very high. A lot of teams are staying alive into the end game because of how many teams are running caustic and just sitting around. So in the mid to late game, you do not want to take any fights. You want to play slow and extremely careful. I mean, if you have to engage, it needs to be a full send and it needs to be very quick and only if you got like a quick entry knock or a lot of damage and they need to be quick wipes. In general, just avoid them in the mid to later sections of the game because once a fight tends to kind of break out, a lot of teams will try and, you know, look at it. Also, try not to be the team in center zone, since most teams won't have KP because of the caustic meta and then being scared, honestly, to get KP early, they will just be thirsty for KP later in the match. And you don't know how many times I've seen the team that's been in the best spot that you'd be like, oh, that team's gonna win, get pushed by four teams and they die and everyone dies. And then there's like a six parties. The sixth party is the one that actually 
cleans everything up and it's because of the the meta right now with caustic and the very you know dumb kp system that they've just kind of uncapped so play a bit more on edge like i've mentioned in other videos try and play edge and with the zone to your back so you only have to fight forward it's the best type of positioning and i promise you you will get your kp late just be patient and quickly, if you guys are loving these tips, please be sure to drop a like on this video so it gets pumped out through YouTube and these tips can help more rank grinders do better in Apex. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. There's a lot more rank guide, rank tips, and rank live streams on this channel, so please drop a subscribe. But now let's move on to the play styles to rank up and be more consistent in diamond lobbies. So let's not talk about the two play styles that I need you guys to just engrave in your head because it is key for getting through diamond. There's two of them. It's slow lobbies and it's fast lobbies. And that's where they're gonna diverge. But the thing that's common to both is that you always wanna take an early fight shortly off of drop. That's what I recommend, unless there's an obvious risk of getting thirded. Then in that case, just make sure you guys are kitted out and loot. But this is where both play styles diverge depending on the lobby. If you have the fast lobbies, which I found to be more rare than the slow lobbies by a lot. This is going to be the fast lobbies, the safe and chill lobbies. Basically, whatever team you find here is going to be almost an isolated 3v3 because let's say there's eight squads in round two. There's a whole bunch of maps there. So most likely, whatever team you fight, unless, you know, there's obviously another team just waiting, is going to be an isolated 3v3 that you can take a slightly a bit more time to finish. Um, and then, you know, it should be very free going into the end game to hold whatever spot you want. And you can very easily take three to six KP into the end game. And you don't really have to worry about those lobbies. They should be pretty straightforward, you know, if you've played ranked up until this point. But then we're going to have these slow lobbies. The slow lobbies are the ones that I've found the majority of the time in rank. They are the majority of the matches that I played. And again, you want early KP here. This is, And then you just basically want to stop fighting unless you just really have to. What I want you to do is focus on hitting beacon, checking out the next zone, and trying to figure out the best spot in that zone and trying to get to it, hold it down. And usually the reason why those lobbies are so slow is because there's usually a lot of caustics or a lot of scared teams or just a combination of both. But even if the teams, you know, suck, if you start to fight, you will be thirded because they just want easy KP. You have to be patient and wait for the later zones. You do not want to hold center spot in the later zones you want to spot on the edge with with the zone on your back where you can only focus forward and know that you're never going to get pinched so focus on your team fighting and get your kp late these games will be so long so just be patient and keep your team together with this you will see that you will start climbing more consistently but you may say but i don't have a team all i ever do is solo queue well check out these tips right here to help you gain more consistent rp while solo queuing